I'm gonna tell you how the social credit system in season three, episode one of Black Mirror Nosedive has been implemented into the real world. If you're new here, I'm Zayna, and on my channel, we talk about creativity, culture, technology, and where they overlap. So if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one, hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell to stay updated. Written by Rashida Jones and Michael Schuer, Nosedive explores the idea of a social credit system where people are prevented and allowed certain rights in society based on the ratings that they give one another. A good rating makes you eligible for things like a rewards program or even getting discount on your rent, while a bad rating leads to things like being fired from your job and overall social ostracization. While Nosedive was written in 2016, the social credit system has recently been implemented in China in 2020. By its own definition, China's social credit system is a set of databases and initiatives that monitor and assess the trustworthiness of individuals, companies, and government entities. Each individual or entity is given a social credit score with rewards for those who have a high rating and punishments for those with low scores. It's similar to the American credit score system, but instead of just affecting your relationship with money lending institutions, it aggressively affects every other part of your life. For example, a good score could lead to priority healthcare or even allowing you to rent somewhere without putting a deposit down, while a lower score could negatively affect your ability to get loans, to use a train or plane to travel, the education that you and your family have access to, as well as your potential romantic partner selection. Using a variety of sources, including an individual's phone, people and companies are tracked by the government, which isn't all that weird because that happens everywhere. What is different is that what a person buys, how they behave, their personal decisions, and their personal interactions are all recorded and tracked in order to establish a level of trustworthiness and responsibility. And yeah, I'll admit companies like Google, Facebook, and really every social media site already do this, but for the most part, it's one to sell you things and two, it doesn't really affect your offline life. This 2020 article mentions that the databases are managed by China's Economic Planner, the National Development and Reform Commission, the People's Bank of China, and the country's court system. However, an article that came out in 2018 mentioned that China Rapid Finance, a partner of Tennyson who developed the ubiquitous Chinese app WeChat, China's largest matchmaking service Baidu, Alibaba, and even Sesame Credit all have their finger in this proverbial pie. Sesame Credit even got Uber's Chinese parallel, Didi Chuxing, in on the action. People are scored on a scale of 300 to either 800 or 950. I came up with a couple different numbers in my research. And while the algorithm has not been officially released, we do know that there are five factors taken into account when people are being rated. The first factor is credit history, which is pretty straightforward. For example, do you pay your bills on time? The second factor is fulfillment capacity, AKA does he or she fulfill their contractual obligations? An example of this is if you decided to sign a contract for a short job, did you complete that job successfully and within the appropriate parameters? The third factor is personal characteristics, which is just you confirming your mobile number, where you live, that you're actually you. The fourth factor is where everything gets a little bit more invasive dubbed behavior and preference. Under this criteria, something as innocent as your shopping habits become a measure of your character. In fact, Alibaba admitted to judging people based on the products that they buy. According to Lee Yun, Sesame Credit's technology director, someone who plays video games for 10 hours a day, for example, would be considered an idle person. Someone who frequently buys diapers would be considered as probably a parent who is more likely to have a sense of responsibility. So not only does this system watch and interpret behavior, it manipulates manipulates it by discouraging citizens from purchases and behaviors that the government does not like. The fifth and final category, as far as we know, is interpersonal relationships. What does someone's circle and online interactions say about them? Sharing what Sesame Credit refers to as positive energy online leads to your scores going up. Positive online energy includes talking about how nice the government is and posting about how the Chinese economy is flourishing. In 2018, when this article was written, Alibaba was adamant that negative posts did not affect scores. But as the article points out, we don't know if this is true or not because the algorithm is a secret. But here's the worst part. A person's own score will be affected by what their online friends say and do beyond their own contact with them. So if person A is friends with person B online and person B decides that they're gonna say, oh, I hate the government, person A is penalized and their score is lowered, which is eerily similar to the ostracization that happens in Nosedive. Mm -hmm. 
As per usual, all sources for this video are listed in the description below. Apparently, most people in China are okay with this system. Or on the opposite end, they're unwilling or unable to speak out against it. For everyone that likes this system, they're motivated through rewards. For example, they may rent a car without leaving a deposit, can apply to travel certain places without an employee letter, and even get their visas fast-tracked. And that doesn't even take into account the status symbol of having a high social score. Apparently Weibo, which is the Chinese version of Twitter, has a high number of people going online to brag about their social scores. As for the group of people who are unwilling or unable to speak out against the social system, there's not a lot that they can do without being penalized. Social scores are mandatory, or at least China said that they were planning on making them mandatory, whether these people like it or not. And if their scores are lowered, they risk slower internet speeds, restricted access to restaurants, nightclubs, or golf courses, the removal of the right to travel abroad freely with, quote, restrictive control on consumption within holiday areas or travel businesses, reduced educational opportunities for their kids, and even fewer prospects for romantic partners. And keep in mind, this is all digital information, which means that it can be hacked and manipulated. Similar to the way that Twitter likes can be bought and Twitter followers can be purchased, individuals will probably pay under the table to have their scores increased. And ultimately, you have to admit that this is a very clever way for the government to enforce stability and conformity without outwardly enforcing it. They're making the system feel like a game rather than a tool to control and manipulate the citizen. Now people will do, act, say, buy, whatever the government wants in order to keep their high scores. Before you start going off and saying, this is crazy, how can they let this happen, etc., I just want to remind you that if you have a smartphone or even just an internet connection, that you are perfectly happy to let this happen to you as well. It just happens slowly and less blatantly and it does not affect your offline life. I mean, aside from the fact that companies look you up on social media before they hire you. Your location is always being tracked on your phone. Your Alexa records your conversations 24 seven. And your Uber driver actually gets to rate you and decide whether or not they wanna pick you up. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button to let me know and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss my next Black Mirror in real life segment. Thanks for watching.